I'm Lauren, a wildlife biologist. I'm David, a wildlife filmmaker. We're still in the Bale Mountains after a more intimate experience with the wolf. But the only option left for us to see more of the population is up. The wonderland of the Bali Mountains is so important for Ethiopia. Not only for conservation, but to provide water for 12 million people in the lowlands of southern Ethiopia, Somalia and northern Kenya. And the biggest remaining territory for the Ethiopian wolves. Only here can we hear the fading howls from the Horn of Africa. All kiddied up and ready to go for our five hour trek to see more Ethiopian wolves. I've tried to balance everything camera on one side, binos on the other, camera bag, water, and bird book. We're hoping to see more endemic species today. Our horses have just arrived. Gorgeous horses that are going to be the ones that take our luggage up the mountain. The hike to the top was long and arduous. Adventures are never fun while you're having them. So, we're still walking and we're very lucky to have Ibrahim with us. Yeah. He's our guide. Yeah, Ibrahim. Say hi. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> he grew we'll up in this area. Yeah. So he knows the mountains like the back of his hand and we're really, really lucky to have him with us. There. We've been trekking for about four and a half hours. I'm absolutely exhausted. I've already lost a pair of sunglasses, entirely my own fault. And we're here above Webb Valley. Now we've got to cross the valley and on the other side, somewhere, is our campsite. I've been told that we've made it. I'm not allowed to look. I've been standing here with my hands of my eyes, so here we go, let's take a look. We have finally reached dizzying heights with pinched lungs. The Bali Mountains literally and metaphorically took our breath away. We found our wolf. It was running, running really fast. A lot faster than we could keep up with them, that's for sure. Possibly hunting. They hunt by coursing, so they run, 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 just like hyenas and wild dogs. And look at this area. Look at this expanse that we're dealing with. It's huge. We've just spotted a wolf track. It looks relatively fresh to me. Down here, I've already circled it. You can see in this section here, the wolf track is hidden in this direction. You can see the back pads, and then you can see the marks of the claws. They don't have retractable claws, so you'll be able to see those marks. This is probably moving quite fast up this incline. So that's good news. Long rat, the prey species of the Ethiopian wolf. Now, normally they hide inside burrows. They have a network of burrows all across the plains and they pop their head up to eat the grass and they go back down again. I don't know how this mole rat is letting us get so close, but it is. Resembling a large, realistic whack a mole machine, small, fluffy heads emerge from underground small ears, tiny eyes, forward pointing teeth, with nostrils they can close while digging. Engineers who shape the Alpha Alpine ecosystem. 
spending just one hour a day above ground, as they are prime delicacy for the wolves. Another endemic, listed as endangered, threatened by habitat loss. Walking on foot next to the rarest canid. Moving at the pace of nature. We kept our distance, but the wolves always saw us coming. There was only one option left. We already witnessed this morning that the wolves are not scared of horses. So we're going to try and see how close we can actually get to them. Isn't she beautiful? We have been up here for three and a half hours on horseback and seen three different wolves. We followed the first one for ages, who was hunting and hunting, and then on our way home, we just saw two different wolves together here next to the cattle. And that's what they do. They hide behind the cattle so that the mole rats don't see them, the mole rats pop out, and the wolves eat them as the perfect hunting strategy. The Ethiopian wolves face three main problems. One, habitat loss to agriculture and the need for arable land. Two, as expert rodent hunters, they have become too specialized, no longer versatile, fallen victim to their own success. Three, the wolves live in harmony with people. However, people come with their best friends, domestic dogs, who compete for food and transmit diseases, such as rabies and canine distemper. The wolves also mate with the dogs, hybridizing, threatening their genetic integrity. As humans move up the mountains, so do the wolves. Like squeezing a tube of toothpaste, they are being constricted to higher and higher altitudes. In the end, where will they go when there is nothing left? Today, there are fewer than 500 adult wolves remaining, 10 times fewer than African wild dogs, and approximately 50 times rarer than lions. Will we lose yet another irreplaceable wonder of our world, trotting down the road to extinction? These animals are not crying wolf, at risk of their howls fading forever from the Horn of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> 